Well, welcome to Highland Presbyterian Church as we once again worship together through video. We're hoping that you are well and healthy and we are glad that you are joining us. And we'll continue with our series on In the Footsteps of Paul and focusing this day on Called to Love. Good morning. My name is Will Massey. I'm the youth director at Highland. Uh, and now I'll ask you to rise in spirit uh, so that we can read in unison the call to worship, which is the uh, Psalm 46. Please join me in reading. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us worship Almighty God. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Noé Juárez, one of the pastors here at Highland Presbyterian Church. So glad that you are joining us for worship. And please join us for the prayer of confession. First in silence and then together, let us pray. Lord, you see our sins more clearly than we can ourselves. You know when we are untruthful and when we think evil of others. You see our anger and unfairness to our friends. You know how hard it is for us to forgive. Lord, you know when we're indifferent to your word, how often we forget to pray, the times we come unwillingly to worship. Lord, you also know how often we turn to you, 
when we are worried, anxious, or in trouble, as we are now amid this worldwide pandemic. Lord, we have sinned without considering how much you love us. Forgive us, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. These words have brought comfort for me through my life, various times in the trials and tribulations I've gone through, times when I thought the world didn't make sense, times when my personal world was turned upside down. And again today in our tumultuous challenge in which we live, I find these words deeply comforting, and I hope you do also. I asked Will Massey, our youth director, to use Psalm 46 as our call to worship, to share together words that can offer us hope and courage, words that, on which we can take our faith stand, words that declare what we believe as followers of Jesus Christ that no matter what happens, God is our refuge and our strength. We are in the middle of Lent as we prepare for Easter celebration. We are in the middle of a series called In the Footsteps of Paul. Today we're focusing on called to love, but we are also in the middle of a worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus a world in which none of us have ever lived through before. By now, I hope you received the letter that I wrote on Thursday through eBlast as well as through post office. Not to add more endless reports for all the virus statistics, but to share what we are doing here at Highland, that we might keep connected socially connected together. Considering all the closures and social distancing, we want to offer our support in whatever we can do and want to make contact with each one of you personally with, with phone calls. Since we can enjoy each other's company sharing coffee in our narthex, we are organizing a church-wide phone tree so that we will make sure that no one is left alone. Our topic today, as I said, is called to love. Our small groups who are meeting, some have discontinued, but others are trying to video conference together. They're using a book which is by Adam Hamilton, and it, it shows the map. At this time, we're studying Paul in his second journey. And on this map, you can see that he has moved from Philippi about 35 miles to Thessalonica, and about another 35 miles to Berea. And then he goes south, 210 miles to Athens. A part of the excitement that I had this summer with my wife, Didi, was spending a sabbatical in all of these cities. It was a wonderful time, but whereas I might have showed you too many photos, I'll allow those who have the book to see the photos from Adam Hamilton. Some of those who will be looking at the video will get a good depiction of these cities. But what I'd like to emphasize for today, for this brief message, is our call to love. Based on one of the most familiar passages that Paul ever wrote, 1 Corinthians 13. Listen to God's word to you. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. 
Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Though most of the time we hear these words that Paul wrote at weddings, it's seen as a broad barometer of application of how we show love to one another. Paul wasn't thinking of a theology of marriage when he wrote these words to the Christians living in Corinth. As Adam Hamilton writes, Paul wrote these words thinking of them as the defining quality of the Christian life, the true evidence of spiritual maturity. Now, God knows all of us fall short of fulfilling these various ways of showing love. On any given day, I'm feeling pretty good if I exhibit one of these listed traits. However, during these days of social distancing and isolationism, Nearly the exact opposite that we cherish about Christ-following lives, lives of deep relationships and close community, we each could use a refresher course on how to love our neighbor, but in a revised edition of the days that we're living in. So I looked through many different sources and compiled a list of loving while living, during an epidemic. First, love yourself. By following all the health guidelines, as the flight attendant would tell you while you were flying, when the oxygen mask drops, put your own mask on first before helping someone else. Stay healthy yourself. Do what the officials ask you to do. Secondly, love with calmness. As wannabe ministers are taught pastoral care in a variety of situations when in seminary, all of them heard this basic term, non-anxious presence. As much as you can be, be the calm one in your conversations with others, or at least try to be. Thirdly, love by connecting. In an environment in which we keep hearing, avoid close contact, maintain six feet distance, do not touch. Use the gift of technology to check in on neighbors and friends. As I shared in my letter, I liked what one minister said, every hand we don't shake must become a phone call we make. Use your phone often. Fourthly, listen in love. No matter what turn a crisis takes, one of the most enduring and powerful gifts we can offer to anyone else is to listen. By listening, we embody the love of the sacred, the love of a wider community, the love of life itself. Compassionate listening is exactly what people need when they are faced with the overwhelming, uncontrollable circumstances as life is offering now. Listen in love. Fifth, love through community. Although a crisis may lead some people to withdraw, it can also be a significant opportunity for all of us to pull together and to support one another. Let's imagine new and creative ways that we can organize and care and offer sustainable living with each other. Number six, love long-term. Remember and remind others of God's loving presence as we stated and claimed in Psalm 46. God was here before the universe itself. God will be here long after the universe has passed away. Seeing ourselves as this much larger picture offers us a groundedness 
and a hope that can only come through our faith. It can help us maintain a sense of hopefulness about God's loving presence in our lives, even when circumstances threaten to dim our hope. And finally, love by praying. Let's let the great reformer, Martin Luther, teach each of us how to pray when his life was at stake, when others sought to persecute him or even kill him, when he went into hiding, when he said he couldn't take it any longer. He says he doubled his prayer life. Perhaps that's what we're called to do this Lent. As we are in the middle of this season of preparation to claim the faith of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but as we are in the middle of this pandemic, let's double our prayer life, praying and interceding for others. By the way, I've never had someone tell me that they didn't appreciate a prayer that was given over the phone. Let me finish with a story. We'll call it Love in Action. I told you I wasn't going to show you photos, but here's one photo I want to show you. It's one that you won't find in a tour book. It's a photo of Paul. It's a, a statue in Berea. Not much is left of anything with Berea. Berea was that city about 30 miles from Thessalonica. Paul went there with with Silas and Timothy. It says in Acts 17, 11, and 12, these Jews were more receptive than those in Thessalonica, for they welcomed the message very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, including not a few Greek women and men of high standing. Within a few weeks of Paul and Silas and Timothy arriving in Berea, some of the Jewish leaders from Thessalonica traveled to Berea in order to stir up problems for the apostles. Some of the Berean Christians heard about this, and they escorted Paul not only safely out of the city, but all the way to Athens, 210 miles south. These Bereans walked in Paul's footsteps. They put him on a boat. They went with him all the way to the city. They put their love in action. And by the way, this meant that when they left him there, they traveled on foot back home to Berea, which probably took another three weeks. This is one of the greatest examples I've ever seen of hospitality, of outreach, of love in action to a fellow brother in desperate need. So let's not just follow in the footsteps of Paul, but let's be encouraged by these Christians in Berea, putting our love in action for brothers and sisters in need in our day and in our time. May it be so for all of us. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind. The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Always chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves in 99 I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away When 
I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so kind to me. When hell felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, There's no shadow you Light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the Chases me down, fight still. I'm found, leaves the night behind. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Please join me in the prayers of the people this morning. Gracious and all loving God, as we worship you today, we admit that we are walking by faith. We trust you even as we experience the newness and uncertainties caused by the spread of a tiny virus cell that are spreading throughout the entire globe. You who so love each one of us as your special and beloved children, we give thanks that your inclusiveness and your specificity is ours. We are all equally welcome in your love. Through Jesus, you are equally available to each of us, reaching out and offering us the strength and comfort of your special attention. This morning, we seek you with the entirety of our hearts. We long for you to enter our deepest selves, to give us the strength, courage, peace of mind, and calm certainty that we are not alone. You are with us. Through your unfathomable love, you offer us the hope and steadfast mercy to deal with the most difficult of times. We praise you and give you thanks for the gift of your compassionate love, which encourages and strengthens us in this time. In the many challenges and changes that we experience, we ask you for an extra measure of love, particularly for people who most especially need it. In the silence of our own hearts, we lift up people who are sick or are worried about contracting the coronavirus. We pray for people battling this awful virus throughout the globe. Provide them with your comfort, your love, and your healing power. We think this morning of all the people on the front lines of managing the pandemic, health professionals, emergency first responders, military and peacekeepers, 
our local, state, and national leaders, and the captains of manufacturing, industry, and financial institutions, all who are working diligently to prepare us to cope with situations and shortages we have never before experienced. Oh God, we ask you to support people who are coming apart at the seams, ones with anxiety or the inability to cope well with the rapid changes. We remember ones who have need of food, lodging, and steady employment. We ask you to help us to reach out to people who are lonely and in need of a phone call, a text, a card, an email, or a creative reminder left on their doorstep that will help them ease the loneliness, fear, or sense of having to face life completely alone. By your strength, bring to mind ones in our lives for whom we can share your special love and concern. Let us be ministers of your love. Above all, give us the hope and assurance that we are completely loved and accepted by you, you the creator of all that is. Just as the Apostle Paul was called by you to love, let us accomplish the three things that we are to do that will lead us towards your completeness of our lives, to trust steadily in you, to hope unswervingly, and to love extravagantly. And all of these are the best, but love is utmost. We join together now in the prayer that you give all of us as your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we close this worship service, appreciate you being a part of it and proclaiming your faith in Jesus Christ. Scripture teaches that you are a child of God. By proclaiming your faith in Jesus, you bear his name. Bear his name thankfully, for you're not your own. Bear his name gratefully, for you are bought with a price. And bear his name joyfully, for he enlists each of us into his service. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.